Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Red Wing Shoes, located in the shops at Centerpoint in Grand Rapids at the corner of 28th Street and the Beltline. The store has everything you need for the worksite or the woods. Stop in or check them out online at redwingshoes.com. And by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. Well, everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors this week. Hey, if there is one thing that we over here on the west side of Michigan are jealous of when it comes to the east side of the state, well, that has to be walleye fishing. We have some over here, but nothing like the east side, and that's where we're going to spend the bulk of this week's show. Jenny Olson's going to take us to the Lake St. Clair area for a really cool walleye fishing tournament with a father-son team. Then Jordan's going to take us to the Detroit River to do a little walleye jigging. And we're also going to have a walleye BLT recipe on this week's show. So much good stuff. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at CountrySmokehouse.com. By Grilly Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling and smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. for the uh, fourth annual May Madness Walleye Tournament on uh, beautiful Lake St. Clair. And uh, the weather's starting to uh, clear up a little bit. A little bit of rain this morning. Wind's starting to shift. Looks like it's gonna be an okay day, all right day. So uh, we got a lot of people showing up today. Good turnout, better than last year. How many you got? Uh, 55, 56 boats. I don't know the exact number. I got so many numbers going through my head right now. So, <laughs> But uh, everybody seems to be uh, all hyped up for all the action today. So the bite's good. Should be a good tournament. The May Madness tournament was starting out a little chilly and rainy, but everyone was excited to get cracking out here. I'd be joining Jerry Fox Jr. and his two boys, Parker and Spencer, on their May Madness experience. Jeff Vantori helps run the event and gave us the rundown on getting things started. We're everybody's getting inspected, boat inspections. Everybody's uh, they're getting inspected. They're coming down. They're launching. They're going to float in the harbor. Uh, Michigan Marine Salvage is going to be the blast off boat, so they're going to come out of the, the channel there and they're going to go start lining everybody up to blast them off this morning. At 7? 7 o'clock. Jerry and the boys made an 18 mile run over to the Canadian side of the lake to start. Jerry's got a lot of history fishing out here. You know, me and my dad started fishing tournaments together, club tournaments on the lake uh, like 35 years ago when I was just, you know, 15, 20 years old. So, and uh, when my kids were just little, they were just babies, we would take them out. And uh, they fish with me, uh, you know, Spencer and Parker would fish with me tournaments and tournaments ever since they were maybe f five or six where I get them into it. And then now I got uh, uh, Parker's fish some national tournaments and Spencer fishes with me on the uh, Michigan walleye tour and uh, some of the national events and some of the Masters walleye circuit stuff. So they travel around the country with me and around the state of Michigan and fish some just some unbelievable waters that nobody even, even knows about. It's fantastic. 
These three guys are like a well-oiled machine out here. Jerry and his sons have been fishing together for so many years already that they have it down pat when it comes to getting all the lines in the water, and they were into the fish right away. After getting his start in local club tournaments, Jerry moved on to bigger ones. Yeah, I've been fishing tournaments for about 20 years now, mostly all over the Midwest, a lot of them in Michigan. Uh, my, uh, fish with my, uh, my two boys a lot. We have a lot of fun and uh, we love doing it. And I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a weekend than coming out here and, and fishing on Lake St. Clair. And I mean, we caught walleyes and bass and just about anything that swims today. So uh, what a ride that we have. So how can you not do this? And just a fantastic opportunity to go out here and do this and have fun. Speaking of fun, Jerry and the boys were battling a triple header right off the bat out here. Their spot was definitely holding fish today, just not necessarily the caliber of fish they were after. Um, we practiced yesterday way over on the Canadian side, in uh, 16 to 18 feet of water. And, uh, we had fish up to 30 inches, so we had some really nice fish yesterday. Uh, today, not so much, uh, but we probably caught over 20 fish today. And we were pulling um, spinners with night crawlers and uh, inline weights and uh, offshore boards. And it just we just probably caught, you know, I don't know how many fish really we caught today, so. But it was a lot of fun. We caught a lot of walleyes, we caught a lot of bass, and we caught pike, we had catfish, a lot of big yellow belly perch, so a lot of fun. A mixed bag, but the live well was starting to hold a few decent sized walleye in it too. After running through a pocket of fish and some fun action, things slowed down for a few minutes and the guys were able to rest. Although resting during a tournament usually isn't a good thing. Picking away at them, how you feeling? You never know until they get to the way in, right? No, for sure. But I think uh, somebody's got to be on some big fish somewhere. <laughs> These are beautiful fish. We need some bigger ones. But it's early, we got time. Tournament contestants needed to be back inside the pier heads by 3 p.m. today to qualify for the weigh in. It was late morning, and we still had a few good hours ahead of us before we had to pull lines and head back across the lake. Yeah, you do this long enough, you understand what you need to have to win. I don't think we really have what we need today to win, but it's a, you, you can't win them all. So you do the best you can, you fish hard, and you know, wherever you end up, you end up. So it's, there's nothing much else you can do with it. That could be the win and fish right there. there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you're not first, you're last would be, you know, as a great analogy, but, uh, you know, the second place paycheck and the third place paychecks are pretty nice too. I don't know if he's gonna help. Jerry, Parker, and Spencer were picking away at the fish and adding to the weight in the basket, but they knew if they didn't find some bigger fish in the next couple of hours, they most likely wouldn't stand a chance to place very high in the tournament. In the meantime, they had a little mayhem going on with their lines. What's going on here, Spencer? So. I thought this rod was acting weird, so I decided to pull it in, and then I think there's a fish on it, and then I realized it's caught on this line, which actually has the fish, but now it's tangled both lines together. <laughs> so either he's going to get that or we're going to hand line it. They were able to get the lines untangled and net that fish, and over the next hour or so, they netted quite a few fish to add to their catch. Well, it's almost quarter after two. We got to make a run back in, and we got 18 and a half miles to go. And this is Lake St. Clair. It can get a little rough on the weekends, so we make sure we give ourselves enough time to get in, so we can uh, weigh our fishing. What are you thinking? Any ideas? No, we had a really nice day. We caught a lot of fish. We had a lot of fun, and that's what it's all about. And uh, I think if whatever happens after that, it's all good. If you come out here. How so far in these tournaments here? I usually, uh, the last two times we fished this, I think we had top fives. We had a third and a fifth. 
And uh, me and my boys fish a lot of tournaments. We fish all over the state, so it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of great people and uh, have a lot of laughs. And if you can't do that, then you, know, you need to quit fishing. So. <laughs> all right, don't take it too serious. Can't take it too serious. Even though there's some great competition among teams, at the end of the day, most everyone here is in it for the camaraderie and possibly the amazing brats that Jeremy grills up at the weigh-in every year. The local radio station was here to help out, and the Lake St. Clair Wally Association handled the scales and record keeping. I caught up with Kim Jugowitz, who's been involved with May Madness from the start. How are you doing? I'm good. We're back at May Madness again. This is crazy. It's always raining at the way. In, it's but... sunshine and it's raining at the same time. So <laughs> it's the only way we throw an event. You know that. Come on now. <laughs> fourth year. Fourth year for May Madness, our sister event to the Buck Pole. Yeah. So um, the dealership's been sponsoring it now with the Lake St. Clair Walleye Club. And uh, they're the ones doing the weigh-in right now. You can see them in the background. So um, about a half an hour, we'll know who the big winner is. So we're pretty excited. Had some rough water out there this morning, I'm hearing. Yeah. Everybody had a couple, uh, few, few uh, kidney banger rides <laughs> getting across the, the water. So yeah. Um, yeah, everything's going good. We had uh, more boats than last year. So I think 54 was the final count for boats. So it just keeps every year, every year. So we love it. In its fourth year, the May Madness Walleye Tournament here on Lake St. Clair is growing for sure. With over 50 teams participating and the number of folks who come to watch the weigh-in and be a part of the festivities, it's certainly a fun place to be. Each team is allowed to weigh in a one-man limit of six walleyes and separately weigh their biggest single fish. Prizes are awarded for overall total weight and for the heaviest big fish. Well, after a long wait in line, the Fox men were here at the weigh-in trailer for the moment of truth. After carefully selecting their six biggest fish, the guys from the Walleye Association zeroed out the scales and set their haul up for the final weight. In the previous years that Jerry has fished the May Madness Tournament, he's typically ended up in the top five overall. After watching other teams weigh in before them, he knew they didn't have a single fish heavy enough to be a contender for the big fish category. With a total weight of 17.64 pounds, they didn't make it into the top five winning teams this year, but they held their own and wound up in the top half of the roster. The top five teams were all in the money and celebrated some nice paychecks to take home for a day on the water. The third place team ended up with 25.62 pounds and winnings of $1,532 to share. Team number two weighed in at 27.63 pounds of fish and brought home a check for $2,382 and the first place team voted a whopping 28.69 pounds for the grand prize of $5,000, as well as the biggest fish at 9.92 pounds. Congrats to all who participated in the 2018 May Madness Tournament. If you're feeling lucky, maybe we'll see you out here next year. For our next segment on this week's show, I was down in the southeast part of the state fishing on the Detroit River for walleye and also learning a little bit more about where the money that we spend on hunting and fishing licenses actually goes. We're down here on the Detroit River. We're at the end of May right now. Typically, a lot of people will think that this is uh, a slow time for the f for the fishery down here on the Detroit River, but actually, it's one of my best times. Um, most recently, all through the month month of May, we've uh, we've really only had one day where we haven't limited out on fish and, and caught multiple fish. Um, after that, so it's just been an incredible fishery, especially at this time of the year. A lot of good eaters. Um, we have had a couple of stretches where we were uh, we were getting into some nice 24 to 26 inch fish as they pushed up from Erie. Even some fish that were spawning, and that was mid-May. But um, right now we're seeing a lot of fish that are in that 14 to 18 inch, some 20 inch fish. Um, so just great eaters, good table fare. A lot of good fishing. We're jigging here today. Vertical jigging, one of the most popular tactics for the Detroit River at this time of the year. 
What I've found in my personal experience has been is that you get different age classes that come in through the river at different times. And right now the river is absolutely loaded with these nice 14 to 20 inches. I'll be down here into the middle of July um, with consistent limits of, uh, of good eating size fish. I mean, you can't go wrong with a nice 15 to 18 inch fish to put on the table. Fish has been great. Um, don't know how many I've caught yet. Uh, threw a few back that were too small, but uh, it's gotta be the fourth one or so, that uh, fifth one I've caught, and threw a few back. So it's been great, beautiful morning, sunny. Nothing better than uh, being out fishing than rather being at work. Matt is the chair of the Michigan Wildlife Council, a group assembled to help educate the public on what outdoors men and women mean to conservation and to help people understand the importance of the funding that comes from hunting and fishing licenses. So the Michigan Wildlife Council is a nine person body. Uh, it was formed back in 2013 uh, through legislation and the purpose of the council is to publicize to the non-hunting and fishing public, the Michigan population in general, uh, where the general population consists of at least 70% of people that don't hunt or fish, of the benefits that sportsmen, hunter, fishers, trappers, anglers do for the state and for the people who live in the state. So that was the intent of the legislation when it was created. And what we are working with is basically a $1 surcharge on every hunting and fishing license that's sold. So this is funded by sportsmen to publicize to the public all the good things that sportsmen do for the state of Michigan. Outstanding. They're here. They're here. Nice double, Hank. Nice double. That's going to put a smile on your face for sure. You talk about a fish like that, beautiful, beautiful. We want to make sure everybody knows about that. There's a lot of sportsmen alone that don't know about that, and then there's probably significantly more non-sportsmen that don't know how these activities are funded, albeit that the activities that the non-hunting and fishing public do participate in, outdoor activities that they do enjoy and take part in, are benefiting from these hunting and fishing license dollars that are being spent and being brought in to, to make sure that the places that they like to go and see and do are always going to be there for generations. So that is our next phase of coming out right now. There's a lot of billboards around and it's all about trying to educate people about how wildlife management is funded, but also how that wildlife management funding supports the things that they like to do. A great example of the money generated by licensed sales helping to aid in conservation can be found right here on the Detroit River. Recently created spawning habitat will help to ensure the health of this fishery for years to come. So Matt was talking about how so much of um, wildlife management is funded by uh, uh, licenses that uh, anglers and hunters purchase in the state and we're out here on the wonderful Detroit River today and we're right near a perfect example of those kind of efforts you know there are over a half a dozen reefs that are being uh, rebuilt uh, uh, primarily to promote uh, um, fish spawning you know over the years between uh, quarrying of rock off the river bottom and um, dredging for shipping channels, the, the, the original national habitat has been changed um, by our urban way of life. And so the DNR has been working hard in conjunction with our Canadian neighbors to uh, restore some of this habitat by building artificial reefs. And we're just off of Belle Isle where there's a four acre um, area that was constructed within the last couple years. And, Behind me is the Ambassador Bridge, just south of the bridge. They're working this year on another four acres of artificial reef. And this will provide uh, an area for the sturgeon and walleyes and, and, and other fish uh, to spawn in the river and, and making a great fishery even greater. And it's the hunters and fishers who are making that happen with their license purchases. Well, we've been having a great time this morning on the Detroit River. This one's a little larger than the average one we've been catching. He's maybe a year or so older than the class that's mainly in the river right now, but it's just been a terrific day. We're here at the end of May and the spring run is still going strong. After fishing the Detroit River for, well, 37 years and now operating a charter business, um, 
for three months of the, the year for the last uh, almost 10 years. I'm always amazed at the diversity of the fishery, the opportunity that it provides. I'm awestruck by the scenery um, and take a lot, of, uh, a lot of gratitude for the opportunity that I'm able to have out here. But um, you know, one of the very unique things too about this area is, is we spend a great day on the water like this catching some great table fare. We're able to go to a, a place right on the river, Sinbad's Restaurant, a very iconic restaurant that's been around for quite some time, where they actually cook your catch. So this afternoon, what we'll be doing here, we'll take the, uh, our catch back to the dock, I'll clean them up, and uh, we'll head over to Sinbad's for some of the best sauteed and blackened fish that you can catch um, and have um, here on the river. Very, very unique opportunity to be able to do that. From start to finish, it was a great day on the water. Special thanks to Joel, Matt, and Hank for inviting me down and for doing their part to educate the public about the important role that hunting and fishing plays in our everyday lives. Hey everybody, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill just outside of the Canadian Lakes area. We're here with Jim Wood and we're going to cook some walleye and I see bacon so I'm already like really liking this. What are we going to do here today? Uh, we're going to do kind of a play on a walleye BLT, I oh. guess. Okay. So instead of lettuce, we're going to do a, like a dressed cabbage, almost okay. like a slaw without the mayonnaise. And then we're going to do a jalapeno tartar sauce. So it's not super spicy, but it does have a little bit of spice. Okay. Is this something you guys do at the restaurant then? or variations? We've done variations before on, on special. Okay. But it's kind of nice because you've got the fattiness from the bacon, the tang from the slaw. You've got, we're not, all we're doing is salting the fish and pan searing it, so you're just getting the walleye flavor. You're not getting okay. any fat. From so the, the cooking of the fish is probably the easiest part of this whole spiel here? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get started. How do you, how do you okay. start this thing? So we're going to make the vinaigrette, which is basically just a fresh citrus juice vinaigrette. So okay. we've got some juice of two oranges, the juice of a lime, the juice of a lemon, hmm. and we've got some Michigan honey here. Now what is in most, I mean, are vinaigrettes just typically that kind of stuff? Like you've got an acid, so which could be, you know, vinegar, or it could be uh, citrus juice. Okay. And then you've got oil, and you've usually got an emulsifier, which the emulsifier is what helps it so it doesn't completely break on you. And in this case, it's the honey. Okay. But the honey is also going to help uh, take a little bit of tang out and mellow it out and mm. just give a little bit of sweetness. Okay. And then we're going to add a little bit of salt. And the oil. So now we're gonna make the jalapeno tartar. And we've got some mayonnaise here. Jalapeno tartar. Got the juice of a lemon. Got some caper. Some tartar, or I'm sorry, some jalapeno. This is pickled jalapeno. You can use fresh jalapeno, but pickled jalapeno just adds a little more acid, gives a little more, a little more bite. A little is it more as hot when it's pickled, or is, that doesn't affect These happen affected? to be. These okay. are pretty hot, yeah. Not all jalapenos have the same yeah, that's kind hotness of, level. Yeah. Um, there's different strains. Like all chefs. Basically, yeah. As you can see with me, I'm about as low as it gets. <laughs> so we've whipped that up. And then right then we're going to add some green onion. Next, add a little salt to your fish and it's ready for the pan. Cook it for a couple of minutes and give it a flip. Then it's ready to plate. Pretty good sized sandwich right there. Mm -hmm. And what is the name of this dish? So, improvised walleye BLT. A walleye BLT. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show, you want to see something again, you can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. 
full episodes of the show there as well as lots of other stuff. All the recipes that we have are also there. And if you do the YouTube thing, you can actually subscribe to our channel at Michigan Outdoors TV and get an email every time we post something new. Good way to kind of keep up on what we're up to. We've got a lot of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. So much good fishing around the state of Michigan. Make sure you get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see it right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. Michigan's hunters and anglers are essential partners to the health of the state's wildlife and habitats. The Michigan Wildlife Council is dedicated to ensuring our hunting and fishing heritage and Michigan's natural resources are preserved for future generations. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises in Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I